Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Advice with Alex and Friends, the podcast. I'm your host, Alex, and I'm joined by my beautiful co-host, Novella. Hi guys. And make sure that you are following the podcast at Advice with Alex on Instagram and Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, the links are below in the description. So we've made life easy for you. Just click on those. And you, if you haven't subscribed or whatever, uh, if you haven't subscribed already, it might my, my, my tongue is tired because we have so much Would to discuss today. It's a hurry. It's like, it's like, Alex, Alex, hurry up. It's like, it's a hurry up with introductions. <laughs> it's it's too hot. Too hot. Come on. Like, there's, there's so much hot off the press today. <laughs> so if you haven't subscribed already then please subscribe wherever it is that you're watching or listening and yeah let's just get straight into it today because welcome to today's news with novella and alex oh my god it literally oh is just my. news hot off the press like we we're recording this on a friday evening and so much has gone on today literally the news about Derek chauvin yeah yeah yeah, yeah. got getting sentenced to 22 and a half years mm-hmm. um which obviously it's bittersweet isn't it you you can't quite rejoice and be happy because obviously somebody um was murdered yeah um, but you can, in a slight way, say that justice has been slightly... T- he he Basically, he got what he deserved. Basically, justice hasn't been served, but he got what he deserved. Just if he was a normal person and he just murdered someone, the same treatment, I think, was applied um, to him, I think, personally. Um, so... But like you said, it just um, doesn't bring back um, George Floyd... But I hope, I hope it sets a precedence as to um, police just stop, stop killing, stop killing our black men, stop killing our black women, you know, leave us the fuck alone. Basically. Right? We don't trouble you, don't trouble us. Yeah. Um, kind of thing. But yeah, I know some people obviously will be slightly happy with the sentencing, but I know quite a few people probably maybe say that he should have got more years. Yeah, I think obviously yeah. because it was manslaughter, yeah. he wasn't going to get, you know, life yeah. imprisonment, yeah. you know, yeah. life imprisonment without parole. He he wasn't going to get wasn't, that. It, nah. was, it was going to be manslaughter because, you know, I guess you can argue that he didn't leave his house that day with the intention of killing George Floyd yeah. in particular. Yeah. So 22 years for manslaughter. I think that's... Personally, Personally, but I, I'm no, I'm no thingy, and I'm not the family. Yeah, I don't I'm know. not the, exactly. I'm not the family. But twenty two and a half years sounds mm. pretty decent. Okay, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but um, the um, fact he's even going to prison. Yeah, I can't lie. I was so skeptical. I didn't think they were. I can't yeah. lie. I thought they were going to come out with some bullshit mm. um, sentence with like uh, eight years, and then can be out in four. Um, I, have I thought a... he was just going to do community service. I'm not going to lie. Mm. That is how much mm. faith I had in the mm. American justice system. Mm. We've seen so many people walk away scot free, mm-hmm. and they have they have gaslit us so many times. Like we've seen in broad daylight, we've seen the videos, yeah. and time and time again, people walk away scot free. So for yeah. it to actually, you know, for there to actually be justice served for the person who has committed a crime to actually go to prison. It's like, oh, wow. Like, yeah. Okay. And it shouldn't be that, yeah, right? Yeah, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be like, it oh, shouldn't. wow. Or like that feeling of like, a, like we just said, like, oh, oh, okay. That's, this should be normal. It should be. Right? I shouldn't be feeling like, oh, phew, they did the right thing. Mm. No, but this, you should be doing this all the time. Yeah. So the fact that, that not just us, but other people feel the exact same way, it's just like, just shows you how crazy and messed up. Uh, the situation the judici- is yeah the judicial system oh. is tra- absolutely trash <sighs> <laughs> oh my gosh I'm just gonna sigh talk about trash because talking, talking about trash talking about trash ultimate trash <laughs> the trash is of the trash oh my lord the oh. UK government you know beforehand <laughs> when people used to you know <laughs> I don't even know where to be because, you know, at least like the UK government, yes, there were times where it didn't make sense, but at least there was some sort of 
class. That's the word, class. There was some sort of maybe trust. I don't know. There was like, there was some this sort would of... never happen under Theresa May. Like, yeah. Like this, like foolishness would never it wouldn't happen. Ha- it, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have happened. No. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have taken place. Yeah. Because... There, you're right. There's a certain level There's of There's a class. certain level of You're something. right. She carried herself. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. She was another one that didn't make sense. But, I know. But she, it wasn't the blunt, the blundering on her part was not this kind of blunder. This is no. like, it's just pure negligence. Yeah. It's pure disregard. Yeah. It's this, it's We're, almost like a buffoonery. Like yeah. they're buffoons. The yeah, government are. are buffoons. They are. They are. They absolutely are. They absolutely are. And <laughs> It's just reflective of those people that, sorry, that vote for them. I saw like a breakdown um, the other day of the ages. And I think it was between 21 and 35. I think majority of people voted for Labour. Mm -hmm. And those obviously middle class, about 50 and above, most majority of them voted for Conservatives. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's not a reflective of our age group, I don't think. It's just the... The other ones, but yeah, buffoon. Speaking about buffoon. Yeah, speaking about um, <laughs> the second buffoon. The second buffoon, yeah. Because number one is obviously Mr. I Don't Comb My Hair. Yeah. The second one is Mr. Cummings. Now, no, no, not Cummings. No, sorry, not he's Cummings. third. Yeah, he's a third one. He's a he's a buffoon. And then yeah. obviously we've got Pretty Pre- Pre- Patel. Second is is Mr. Um, Halfcock. But Halfcock. That's what you call him, but he proved today yeah. it's not half. Well, he, 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 he said... He planted it strong. He's, <laughs> he said it. He said it with his freaking chest. Oh my gosh. But let's dissect. Like, man. so this <laughs> very morning, like I said, we're recording on Friday. Is it Friday 25th of June 2021 in the year of our Lord? That is when we're recording. And I woke up this morning. You know, I haven't had a morning like this since the whole Porsche stuff happened. Yeah. So again, I woke up in the morning, you know, you're kind of half asleep and then you, you go on the timeline yeah. or you go onto Instagram, you see yeah. some information, you go, wait a minute. Yeah. Or did I just see it and just wakes you up completely? So seeing that Matt Hancock has been having an affair yeah. with his aide, Gina Colladangelo. I'm, tra- I'm not trying to uh, butcher her name like that, BBC presenter. Ah, I'm that's not even another, trying to, like, I'm not even trying to say it with confidence. I don't have my script that I would have looked beforehand before yeah. coming on camera. Oh, so. This country always G-G. like, there's just this <laughs> disrespect of people's names. And you know what? You have to, like it's 2021. There's no excuse anymore to be butchering people's names. It doesn't take that much research no or a little bit of practice yeah just do a little bit of practice if you want like they teach you in school break it down by syllables g ka yes you know do it by three because this is not a name that doesn't sound like how it's spelled no that makes sense yeah so when people say oh your name's tough no but you learned phonetics in school yeah so that's why i'm saying my name you just don't want no don't want there La. If you don't know how to say yeah. it, just break it down two, three chunks like you learn in school and then just say it like people that. Don't say it no, people don't know how to read. People don't know how to read. If you're read. not, if you're you not confident about it, I would just say it a little bit slower just so you can see mm-hmm. and stuff. And like Alex said, just practice it. I would always, if I see a name that I'm like, oh my God, practice it quickly beforehand because there are names that catch you off guard. Yeah. Not African names for me. Yeah. But like there's some like Irish names and stuff like that I've seen and I've had to look twice yeah. and, and go on Google Scholar and be like, can you pronounce this for me? Yeah, because but I people no can idea. say Siobhan. The Siobhan. Well, this is the thing. Yeah. But when I look at it on there, I'm like, what What does that mean? Like, um, Or Sorovsky. Yeah. I hope like, I said that correctly. I don't know. <laughs> I, think, I think that's how I you think. say it. Or like Neve. Like, I think it's spelled like, N- some people spell it the Irish way, which I think is N I. A M H. Yes. So that says yes, nymph. Yes, so you can say yeah to you, me. To me, yes. That says like nymph. Yeah, you so can I'm say like, those names correctly. Yeah. That don't uh, that are not um, pronounced how as they're spelled. Said, yeah. So that lets me know that as soon as you see a name that you're not familiar with, yeah. Even though phonetically you can sound it out, you've just decided, oh, it's no, it's too, it's too tough for me. I don't do it. Yeah. Like, or he could have just saved himself the embarrassment and just said Gina. Yeah. Gina, the aide of Matt Hancock. Yeah. Because really, people aren't really 
Like, we, we don't care about they we don't really care about her tea. surname they just yeah, want to know the tea, know the tea right? just want to know what's, like, going, what's going, on. going on yeah 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 so yeah. he was caught red handed you, oh. you know when you get caught in the act what can you really say yeah like as in <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's nothing say. there's nothing to say the evidence is there there's nothing to say, <laughs> to say. I cannot believe it Oh and God, I don't Alex. even know where it was. Was it in like government building or yeah, something? Yeah, it was in Whitehall. So it was in the government building. Yeah. So, okay. So they were supposed to be observing um, social, social distancing, distancing rules. Yeah. yeah. And they they couldn't keep their hands to themselves. Yeah, they, the literally. Corridors. Literally. Right, got it. Literally. Okay. So, <laughs> the, you know what? The one thing I love about scandals that happen in, the, in Britain, like you, Brit- you British people, right... This is where you guys are my favourite because the memes and everything that you guys come out with, Twitter was yeah. popping off today. Like, I just absolutely... I think I wrote a, li- a, a list of... No, I think two of my favourite things that must have come out today. <laughs> Someone said... <laughs> um, Matt has done the... This is what he meant by eat out to help out. Um, saving ah! life. <laughs> I love the British. I absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> best, <laughs> best believe I told my mum that this morning. I was oh. just like, that's what they say. She was just like, oh, God, Novella. But um, <laughs> saving lives, shagging wives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw, um, where else was the other one? Hands, face, ass. I was just like, you know what? You guys from morning, this morning, I have, I had this whole day, I haven't stopped smiling because you guys have absolutely killed... Uh, the jokes have been fun. And then Munya at the end, obviously, Mr. King Killer himself just yeah. killed it at the end yeah. with his skit Shout about it wasn't me. Like, honestly. Shout out to him and his work ethic. He, he never misses. He never, he never sleeps. He doesn't sleep. Yeah. When, when He's the definition of, you know, he understood the assignment. Yeah, every like, time. Every time. Every single time. In fact, he created the assignment. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Him, him, and, <laughs> him and Dominic Cummings are the ones that, that leaked the photo so that yeah. there was enough time for him to prepare to put something together. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, Dominic Cummings is, is sprinkling a little something every single week. Obviously, it's not been confirmed that it's come from him, no, but no. I just want to pin it on him. Anyway, I want to pin it. Like it, just, it just makes it... Yeah. 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 You know? It's like, like, y'all thought I was finished? Yeah. No, absolutely and, not. And what made me laugh as well was Boris Johnson saying, it's finished. It's yeah. okay. You know, it's Well, done. he has to. He has to say that because I do believe Matt has probably got some things on Boris too. I believe he has to, he has no choice. The same way he defended Dominic when he was driving to the castle uh, for his eye test. Well, no, not for his eye test, when he couldn't see or whatever and stuff. And he covered for him and was just like, it's fine, yeah, and stuff. Well, we knew why uh, mm-hmm. he was covering because... Dominic had some grenades and I feel the same about Matt. I mm-hmm. think Matt knows a lot of things. So he's just like, boy, if I tell that guy to resign, him and him and Cummings together, it's, it's all over. It's literally all over. But jokes aside though, there are families involved in yeah, this. Yeah, because I didn't know, literally just before we yeah. started recording, I found out that she, oh, well, I knew that she was married. Mm. She's married to some millionaire tycoon, fashion millionaire tycoon. So she has, you have money. And he's he's a he's a, a good looking guy. I think her husband is anyway. Like obviously if, if you compare Matt Hancock to the husband, like the husband wins yeah. a, a million and one yeah. and he's got a full head of hair. Okay, great. Um, and that's the other thing about the picture you can't even deny because obviously his head is yeah. done like this and everybody we knows we know that hair shape everybody knows his the hairline McDonald's. yeah we know the McDonald's headline oh so you we, said we McDonald's we get it there's no respect there's no respect to David no there's a, there, he does not respect us oh. so there is absolutely no respect for him today oh no, my no, gosh no so um yeah yeah there's no tonight oh gosh what was i saying about the family about the family so yeah, yeah so i f- obviously he's married yeah. and he's got kids has he got three children i think, I think so yeah and i think they both do yeah she's also got three kids and it's it's always quite, quite sticky and obviously when i saw this in the morning i had the there were some um 
misconceptions that I had in my head planted already. I thought that she was kind of like, you know, the young aide yeah. trying to work her way up. Yeah. So when I found out she was 43, I was like, ah, you're grown. Yeah. That's one. <laughs> Like you're a big woman. So wait, because I don't understand the school, the school boy and school girl antics in, in Whitehall in the corridor. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. You people couldn't, like you guys are grown people. Yeah. You can go to a hotel. You're not telling me that you guys can't, he's Matt Hancock. He can go anywhere he wants to go. Clearly he can do whatever it is he wants to do. Yeah. So let's be real. Like that's one. I didn't understand I can't keep my hands to myself. We have to display this something, something it's in front weird, of everybody. Isn't it? Like, it's true, you know. If you yeah. look into the picture, you're absolutely right. It's just like them urges where it's just like, oh, I can't, I can't hold this any longer. At like, your big kiss age. me now. Like, At your big yeah. age. like not even in the elevator. Yeah. The elevator has we cameras. also has too. cameras as well, but oh, at least. Come on. Okay, yeah, you're right. It does have it, but. At least there's something about doors being closed yes. and nobody else, like, you know, when the doors are going to open. So then you kind of distance yourself or whatever yeah. it is. But like, I just, anyway, that's one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So two, and you know, like we said, each of them has got three kids involved and, um, you know, from their marriage, from their current marriages. And it's, it's sad when obviously you've got children involved because already Matt Hancock's kids, I know they get anyway. Yeah. I know yeah. that they go to, I'm sure that they go to a prestigious school, but even in the prestigious school, they're getting bullied saying, absolutely. My, my dad says that your dad's an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. My, my dad says that your dad's a buffoon. Yeah. You know, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Wherever it is that they go yeah, to yeah. school. Yeah. So they, they're already dealing with that day to day. They already have to deal with you as their dad. Yeah. Like, they're already blaming you for COVID and all that, even though they, they've managed to rectify the problem. Um, it seems. And now they're going to go to school on Monday and this is going to be the talk of the town. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. And even all these newspapers have now, they've come and mentioned her kids. I know. So now they're mentioning her kids and her kids are going to come and get it on Monday. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just embarrassing. Mm. And especially embarrassing as the husband and the wife. Like, as Matt yeah. Hancock's wife, right? Yeah. You've probably spent the last year trying to poorly defend your husband. You know, when you're going antics. to those tea parties When you're going and to everything. the ladies' nights, yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh, you know, like, Mrs. Hancock and stuff. And you're like, oh, no, he's doing such a great job. And, you know, he, he works to the best of his abilities. And it's just like, well, all them times where he was told telling you he was working late mm -hmm. and uh, i'm sorry but how during this pandemic how did he have time he's the health secretary alex how did he have time to he have a stressed. main chick he was and, stressed oh, and a side and chick. he needed to find a way to relieve the stress what? who had time he did but that aside jesus because tell you, he didn't do his job well so clearly well he had time. yeah he had time right he had time. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's just the embarrassment, right? Being the wife or the husband. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. Like, have some, like, <laughs> decor or something where, <sighs> especially when you know you're in the public eye. And mm -hmm. uh, and the, the picture just, every time I've pictured that picture, like, it just gives me, like, you Especially with his hand boy. on her bum. Oh, oh, it's God. the hand on the bum it's for the me. It's the hand on the bum for <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> if you see the state of that body like it's just, ah! just it's just the, it's just the it was yeah like a child like the first it's, it's time really, he'd ever been it's kissed really before it's really giving school boy and school girl yeah. it's really giving school boy and school girl you know but i just i just can't i, I can't. honestly just can't with yeah him. i'm just thinking like how do you how do we Obviously, we will move past this, but how do we move past this? Because it's so difficult. It's like next week, Friday part. is going to be something else. Yeah, wasn't it last week Friday with them with the WhatsApp messages? With yeah, the hopeless and stuff. Yeah. So now next week Friday, what's it going to be? Well, Dominic has still got his text messages. He hasn't released them all. I believe Dominic has got loads. I feel like for every every Friday, there's for every Friday there's a WhatsApp from Dominic. Friday, Fridays with Dominic. Yeah, Fridays, Fridays with Dominic. Exactly. Oh my god. Yeah, but it's just, it's just disgusting. It really is. Do you think he should have resigned, or In do you think it, Yeah, or do you think it's not that serious? 
It is serious. Yeah. It is serious because you are the health secretary. Yeah. You are, is he like second or third in command? Yeah. You are a husband. Yeah. You have children. Yeah. And moreover, you were the health sef- secretary. And during this COVID period, yeah. one of the main things that was preached was social distancing. Yeah. And you clearly didn't social distance. And this is not you social distancing from your family yeah. or from your wife. This is from uh, a mistress who lives in a whole other household and has a whole husband of her own and has children of her own. So I think that's what it is. I think that there's so many layers to this one event. And ultimately it's that do as I say, not as I do. I will be able to do whatever it is I want to do. And you guys just have to get on with it. And that's that, Yeah, you know? And it's kind of like, I do feel, I'm just feeling a bit frustrated from them because it feels like they're continuously rubbing this in our faces. Mm. We're here and they're there and mm. they can do whatever they want to do. With very little repercussions. With very, yeah, with very little re- repercussions, like you said. Like it just constantly just feels like a joke. Like uh, we're just the puppets. We listen to whatever they say. Mm-hmm. Get, do this, do that. You know, you can't do that. You can't do this. But they're just doing what the hell they like. Yeah. And it's just, for me, it's just becoming a little bit disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they, I think they don't realise that people that like, um, normal people that are like social distancing and stuff like that or doing whatever, they're doing it for themselves, not because of what the government have said. Mm-hmm. And I think they need to realise that we're doing whatever we've got to do, right, to protect ourselves. But in terms of listening to that government, I'm I'm so done with them. Yeah, there isn't there isn't any confidence no. in the government at this point. Well, from, from most people that I've spoken to anyway, they you know, we were, we saw the state of the world last year and everyone yeah. kind of just wants to get to a place where, we have freedom. Yeah, some sort of freedom. Some at sort least. of freedom, yeah. I know uh, we, we, we're on the journey for yeah. there, but especially as well when we're doing the biggest kind of push for the whole kind of vaccination thing and stuff like you guys should be head down kind of drilling for your goal, not getting involved in stupidness. Well, they'll like probably this. say what their, their rebuttal will be. I've had the vaccination though. That's probably what they'll say. You know, they'll have some sort of rebuttal. And on that note, actually, how do you feel about, you know, the government trying to use religious leaders to encourage ethnic communities? So ethnic minorities, um, those those kind of communities to to take the vaccine. I saw that the other day on BBC News where they had this pastor who was speaking about helping encourage people. I think he was using his church as a vaccination centre as well. Um, yeah, they thought, oh yeah, because black people are religious, aren't um, not just black people, sorry, ethnic minorities, most of us are yeah, religious, right? Religious, yeah. So, right, let's who can we um um thingy on? Yeah, let's get the um, religious leaders to um I'm uh, I'm on the fence. Mm-hmm. I I get their intent mm-hmm. behind it mm-hmm. because people, you know, <sighs> They're getting people who they trust, right? Like majority of us kind of trust your your priests, your pastors, your imams, whoever mm-hmm. the kind of religious leaders are, um, as a way of kind of building confidence in people and kind of encouraging. I don't mind that too much. Um but I think it's shameful more on you that you have to call upon these people, that these people don't trust your word. Mm-hmm. So they have to go and speak to somebody else to kind of say it in like uh, uh, a way that would encourage you, if that makes sense. So that's yeah. that's the only thing. I'd, I'm I, I'm not sure I'm a massive fan about it, and I think they've done that a lot. And I saw on the Shade Borough today, which was funny, about Anthony Joshua. He went out and said, you know, encouraging people to kind of get their vaccinations, and then Wiley responded and was just like, like Anthony, massive respect for you, but don't do that. <laughs> like let people make their own decisions mm, and make their own um, decisions, yeah. yeah just let people make their own decisions and stuff like that we don't know as normal people whether they've endorsed you or whatnot because we don't know your intents behind certain things you know some of some people have got like um brands and stuff like that which support them and endorse them and then a vaccination thing is massive so mm-hmm. we don't know your true intent behind it and no offence for me, and I've always said this, with celebrities, I, I can't relate. No. Because, like, Boris and all of that, I can't relate because the treatment that you would get 
if something went wrong, mm-hmm. I won't get that. You, we saw how quickly we saw how quickly COVID. Boris bounced back after getting mm-hmm. COVID. If that was any other normal person, I don't think they would have mm-hmm. survived that. Mm-hmm. So for me, like stuff like that, you've got to make your own justified decision because as you can see, <laughs> our government's an absolute joke. But um, yeah, I think, yeah. I feel like I rambled a bit. But no, 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 no. It's a good point <laughs> to make because obviously, you know, with, when it comes to like the religious leaders, um, you know, if Pastor says something, yeah, people will respect it for one. And people really carry their religious leaders mm. like on their head, like yeah. they are God, yeah, which obviously they're not. So I can understand why. And like you said, it's just a shame because people have lost faith in the mm. government and people are not listening to the government because they don't trust them. So this is the route. Um, I'm... I'm kind of not against it because anything that's going to stop the not... Because du- during the height of this pandemic, the way that propaganda was being spread mm. within the African community, mm. I'm sure it was the same in the Asian community, but I can only speak for the African community. Yeah. In terms of all the things that was being spread around, you have to use onions in order to protect yourself from COVID. You have to put garlic in the corner of the room to protect yourself from, from COVID. It's 5G. Is this, is that like, they had to like... <laughs> What's that? To crack down. Yeah. What's, what's that? To crack what's that was down? awful. It was absolutely awful during this. Time. Yeah, it's the same plastic rice gang, wasn't it? <laughs> it's the same plastic rice gang, isn't it? Honestly, <laughs> who are these people? I swear, it's like a. Group. Where did they get this information <laughs> from? I want to know who is funneling the information yeah. consistently. I'm tired. I had to stop. I had to put a stop to automatic download on WhatsApp because yeah. otherwise I'd be going through my phone thinking, huh? Yeah. What kind of random video is this? And like my parents send me this stuff and it's like when I when they ask me about a video, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about because obviously it doesn't download. Yeah. And um, they're upset. That I'm not watching. <laughs> What they've sent me, but I know it's rubbish. Yeah, I know it's I don't care. Rubbish. Yeah, absolutely right. I actually don't care. Yeah. So, whatever conspiracy is, I, I kind of want these things to be put to bed. In fact, in one of the other major reasons why people are against taking the vaccine is because, you know, people have said that it affects fertility. So there's studies being looked into at the moment um, in, in regards to whether it affects fertility. There was there. I think once you take the vaccine, there's some sort of app that you can report back to. Yeah. So um, some women reported irregularity in their period. Periods, yeah. And yeah. they said, oh, well, you know, I think about 5,000 women reported it, but there, there probably could have been more women who would have reported it, but maybe they didn't even realise that there was mm-hmm. irreg- irregularity in their period. So that's something else to kind of... Um, be- and let's not downplay that, right? Yeah, yeah, about the irregularity yeah. of yeah. periods, because I, for me personally, I'm very, like, I'm so to the book. Mm-hmm. So if I, I got any... Oh, I can't even say the word. Irregularity. Yeah. See? You see how you say it, Mr. You just break it down slowly. (laughs) (laughs) But you don't make a fool of yourself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) But yeah, exactly. But yeah, I I am very regular in terms of mine. So I would know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 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 yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. So that's something that they're they're looking into. And um, I also think as we as people, because that's the kind of question that's being asked. And I, I've I've asked one or two people, you know, like, would you get the vaccine? That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, just out of curiosity, maybe I might start refraining from asking that question, because I guess ultimately it's not really my business yeah. whether somebody takes the vaccine or not. But there's definitely this whole I've definitely felt it from both sides. Like, ah, uh, why haven't you taken the vaccine yet? And I mean, right now, as far as I'm aware, I can't take, you can't take the vaccine if you're pregnant or if you're breastfeeding. So I'm breastfeeding, so I'm not taking the vaccine. So that's one. And then, so that, but then there's, you know, there's this like, you know, why haven't you taken the vaccine? Why haven't you taken the vaccine? I definitely have, have felt that from certain people. And then there's this other side of, don't take the vaccine, don't take the vaccine. It's like, I'm not somebody that likes to tell people what to do because I don't like when people tell me what to do or try and, yeah. you know, impose it upon me. Whatever it is that you choose to do, you you do it. You, yeah. you do your, your due um, diligence and do your research and whatever choice you make, people it's just have to, to respect that. Yeah. I, f- yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I feel, what am I trying to say? I feel it more at work mm. 
than in my personal life because okay. like with like friends and family and stuff like that mm-hmm. like I haven't taken the vaccine yet um with um like friends and um like close friends like outside friends um like like we like yeah. <laughs> I mean, not many of us really ask and stuff like that mm-hmm. because it's, we don't, we're not really fussed about stuff about that. But I feel it a lot at work, mm. a lot. Because like when you speak to everybody, everybody has taken it. It's become like a norm now. Oh, like as soon as like my age group was up, like it was just like, oh, Novella, you can go book yours now. Okay. Work somebody at work? Yeah. Ah. Like honestly, Alex, ah. like, it's quite, it's quite deep. Like ah. people are like, you know, like it's nothing. Like, you know, oh, have you, have you had yours yet? Like, and people speak about it so openly, like, oh, I had mine yesterday and stuff like that. Have you had yours yet? And I, I, I just sit and listen. I'm like, well done. Like, I'll honestly yeah, say, like, I well done, it. I respect that, yeah, it. Yeah, I respect it. And stuff like that. But I was just like, I, I'm not quite there yet. I was just mm-hmm. like, I'm not, I'm not, I hate the term anti-vaxxer because I don't think people who don't want to take it are anti-vaxxers. I mm-hmm. think it's just another label. I'm not against, I'm not against the vaccine. I'm just building the courage to get there. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. It's just taking me, I will get there. Mm-hmm. I know that. Mm-hmm. I've always been quite open about that, but it's just taken me a little bit longer than than most people. I'm not someone that goes as soon as they say this, especially coming from this government. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I'll take it and stuff like even, that. And even, I just even it. when it comes to food, you know, when they yeah. say food is ready, yeah, it's, it's, you know, so like, okay. that kind of let people right. go first, and then I come after. And then I come after. I'm not, I'm not the one at the front of the queue. No, not intentionally. And no offense, right? Like I don't go to everybody's house and eat everybody's jollof rice. Like, that's just me. I, I, For me, I'm just not that type of person. Like, I'm like, who made it? Somebody. Okay, no problem. Uh, like, yeah. I'm like, I'll go for the safer options, right? You go for the safer options. Yeah. And so I'm exactly the same um, uh, with that. I mean, it took me what? I only got, I always say this, not as an excuse, but I was just like, it took me, I was only like 25 when I got online banking. So I was just like- I remember I'm, this. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm I the worst this. person yeah. to make a decision about something like this because I have to go through that whole thought and change process. I'm very meticulous. I have mm-hmm. to, like I'm reading, I'm doing so much research right now mm-hmm. just to get me to that point where I'm like, Okay, and then if anything comes off of it, because if anything comes off of it, that was my choice, right? Yeah, yeah. No one forced me to take yeah, it. Yeah. That was my choice. But I, I'm not here for the shaming or the... Because I, I do feel that a bit at work, a little mm-hmm. bit of like... Ugh like a bit of shaming and mm-hmm. because I'm black as well like it's just like another added thing isn't it and it's just oh, just black people as always just being uh, um, making a no, nonsense yeah no just reason. making a nonsense out of everything instead of just, just take it like and I hate it when people say that mm-hmm. just just take like, it like medicine just, uh, isn't racist like, yeah. like there isn't things within medicine that you know favour some races and not others yeah you know so let's not let's not downplay yeah. the effect within the community and the reasons why people have concerns, of course, and they're r- within their right to have concerns, of course. I just need for people to respect, respect. whether yeah. someone chooses to take it or, or, not. Do- or doesn't. Yeah. And whether they choose to take it or they don't choose to take it, it's got nothing to do with you. You moving forward, you make that choice of, as to how you're, you're going to do your things. You do your things. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. When I know that I haven't taken it, I make sure that one, I test regularly. I actually test really regularly when I've been at people's houses, when I'm going, especially if I go into work, I always test before going into work. Or if I know I've had a busy weekend when I've seen quite a few people, I always make sure I test a thingy because I've got to make sure I'm not just myself, but other people I'm seeing and stuff and just making sure because I'm very conscious that it's still at the back of our mind and people need to understand right black people we don't like diseases we don't like getting sick we don't like none of that so anything we are always the 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 definition of prevention Mm -hmm. (laughs) like we always do the most like as soon as you've got like a tickle in your throat yeah mum's like the ginger and lemon is in the fridge 
can you go and sort it out mm-hmm. immediately? Early cap, early cap, yeah, capture it early. Capture it early. They're so quick. Mm-hmm. Like as me, as soon as I get like a little bump on my arm, my mom's like, ah, novella, go to the doctor. Mm-hmm. Like we are very pro <laughs> not getting sick. Mm-hmm. So if you see ethnic minorities, you know, um, uh, uh, having a little bit of resistance or it's taking them a little bit longer, try to be a little bit more understanding and just be like, okay, you know what? Yeah, it's, fair dues. Fair dues. Like, fair dues. It's what it is. It's just people trying to force things onto other people. Yeah. Because, you know, th- there doesn't have to be uniformity. No. And there it doesn't, doesn't have to be a general consensus. No. Yeah. I understand why, because it's, it's easy to have a general consensus of yeah. everyone's going to take it or everyone's not going to take it. And obviously, like, they're swaying more towards everybody taking it. Yeah. I understand why. Yeah. Um, but again, it's it's people's choice. So if yeah. somebody doesn't want to take it, then they're not going to take it. And then that's that. That's that, right? That's that. Uh, so. Moving on. Moving on, because there's just so much. So much. <laughs> um, so the government needs to explain why 60,000 people can sit in a stadium, but I can't shackle on the beat as well at a dancery. Yeah. Because COVID is activated when you dance. Yeah. Straight away. But it's not COVID, it's not activated when you're playing the football. When you're not playing when you're playing football. Yeah. Yeah. It's mad. It's just another thing with the government. Mm. The government is trashed like every single day, honestly. Yeah, it's just another thing. It's I just wonder like who makes these rules? It's it's always a financial decision, isn't yeah. it? Because when it comes to Oh my god. The foot the footy, obviously there's yeah. there's there's a lot of money to be made from that. Yeah, yeah, sector. yeah. So yeah, they would give it the go ahead. The other day Taxes, when they right? had, um, yeah. when they had, oh, what's the horse racing? Ascot, Ascot. Mm-hmm. You know that was fine. Yeah, absolutely. Even yeah. Queenie went. Yeah, yeah. The royal family did yeah. go. Right, they turned up. Yeah, they turned up. Yeah, but then you're telling people, or like, I really felt for those. I know a lot of parents look forward to taking their going to watch their kids. Um, at sports day oh sports day okay. and no, no parents were allowed to go and watch their kids at sports day and I don't know for anybody else but growing up sports day and your parents cheering you was like Listen, the biggest thing sports ever. day yeah because that's the day mommy and daddy sometimes weren't busy you know every time mommy and daddy are busy this this time they weren't busy yeah. because they were always coming and it was so nice and I lived for the mom and dad's race mm-hmm, mm-hmm. my dad always used to go and compete in the dad's race I always yeah. used to push him to go and compete and stuff but yeah I know and like it just it was just a little bit heartbreak uh, heartbreaking and it just, I don't know why recently it just feels to be centred around football because mm-hmm. they were saying the same thing about, you know, when Portugal was on the green list mm-hmm. for the... Travel. Yeah, for travel, but it was in time for the football final. Oh, okay. I can't remember if it was... Um, oh, oh, God, I think it's going to kill me. But yeah, it was one of the finals anyways. And then as soon as that final finished, then that's when Portugal moved to the amber <laughs> list. So it feels like the government is being really kind of led by football and stuff. So I I don't know why. I don't I don't know why. But it's just um, oh. it's just a bit ridiculous right now. Yeah, yeah. It's you know one rule for this and another rule for for somebody else. And again, kind of speaking of rules and constraints and restriction mm. something that kind of came to my attention this week that I wasn't aware of was um Britney Spears conservatorship <sighs> yeah so I didn't even know that that was a word I didn't know that co- what conservatorship no. was I had to yeah. look that up yeah and it was really sad to see I think just as a whole kind of Britney's journey mm. from you know the whole incident of her shaving her head up yeah. until now yeah has been like the way that people mock, you know, people love to scream mental, mental health, mental health, yeah. mental health, but they pick and choose when it suits them. Yeah. You know, you can bash somebody online mm-hmm. and that's not 
disrespecting mental or, health. Or their their mental health or compromising their mental health. But if somebody was saying something to you yeah. and you don't like what they're saying, then again, the kind of whole uh, mental health argument comes into it. So we we definitely pick and choose when it suits us as a whole within um just just within life i think yeah that's one but she's clearly been through a lot mm -hmm. and her father controls her estate yeah not only does he control her estate and her finances mm -hmm. he controls her day-to-day -day life what she does day to day yeah so she doesn't want to be under conservatorship anymore mm -hmm. but her father regulates her day to day so she cannot go and see a lawyer she cannot go and see a doctor. She cannot go and see a therapist. These are not things that she can do because he is the one that oversees what she does. If that is an ultimate mind control, I don't know what is. She literally is living like a prisoner. And that, that for me is really sad because the two times where conservatorship would be put in place is when somebody's elderly mm -hmm. and they, you know, you kind of feel like they they can't manage their day to day or their estate anymore. And when somebody has had um, mental health issues that kind of compromise their, their safety and, and maybe the safety mm -hmm. around them, uh, of people around them. And maybe that was the case, you know, when that, when the incident first happened, but I'm sure over time. 13 years ago. Yeah. I'm 13. sure over time that you, you kind of give, that person some sort of leeway some yeah. sort of freedom some sort of something allow me to show you i've grown yeah allow me to show you that i can stand for myself because i'm a big woman i'm grown yeah absolutely absolutely like it, it was heartbreaking i watched the documentary um freeing was it called freeing Britney Spears or something like that mm. i think it was something like that and that's when i learned about kind of the situation with her whole dad and and the control but you're right when i heard her in court and talking about you know she wants to get married and she wants to have a baby but she's got like an iud mm -hmm. and they won't let her go to the doctors to take it out because mm -hmm. she wants to have um um more children and stuff and you're just thinking but why 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 is the why is the dad happy to have that much control over mm -hmm. your child? And like she said as well, like I'm paying for all of this. That that that, 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 that is what bugs my me. Mind. That is what bugs me. It's my money. Yeah, it's me. It's me. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, yeah. And you are the one that wants to control what I have. Yeah. If I squander all this money, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that like her her parents made sacrifices to to get her to where she is to Fair be Britney enough. Spears. But ultimately she is Did Britney that. Spears. I wish I knew her full name. Britney's I've let's let me I'll Google it at some point. Because I really want to give her her flowers and give her her respect. Britney Jean Spears. Britney Jean Spears. Yeah. She is Britney Jean Spears. Yeah. Okay. Don't if she didn't open that. her mouth to start yeah. singing Oops I Did It Again. You people would not have money to be overseeing so mm. they, there is definitely something about parents stepping back and yeah. giving the control back back to your children yeah. she's yes she's your child she's always going to be your child but she's an adult and she's got two children of her own absolutely and as well like i know that's why she said she stopped because she before she kind of, we went into lockdown or, well, anyways, a couple of years back, she used to do the, she was part of the Vegas residency yes, yeah. when they paid, but she said she stopped mm -hmm. doing that because. Quite abruptly as well. Yeah, because her dad was getting all this money. Her mm -hmm. dad was controlling. She was just like, well, I'm not going to go sit there, work my ass off, do all of this. And I've got no control of my money. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So I totally, yeah, I totally get where she's coming from. But you're right, there must come a time. Like, this thing happened 13 years ago. 13 years ago. Like, whatever, what happened to Britney is is quite normal now. Mm -hmm. It is very, very normal. And it happens to <laughs> the normalest people um, um, regardless. Um, but, um, yeah, there's got to be a time when you're like, actually, you know, she's done so-so and that. She's on a really great journey she seems to have done really well like in the last kind of um couple of years so why would you want to still kind of keep her under that like damn it i'm a grown-up mm -hmm. like this is ridiculous but yeah it's interesting because i don't know why it's proven so hard to come out of it mm -hmm. like the legalities about it was well, america isn't it yeah like it just seems so intense like she's been sh struggling for years 
to try and come out of it mm-hmm. and stuff. So I don't know kind of what's in the background. And why would you, well, how can you sit there as a dad, right? And see your daughter suffer like that and feel no type of way? Entitlement. Yeah. It's entitlement because he's not the only dad to kind of control. I want to say Lindsay Lohan's dad. Possibly. was quite controlling yes, as yes, well. Yes, yes, yes. So we do see that with the fathers. I, I don't even put it past Matthew Knowles. I don't even put it past Matthew Knowles because you see, there's the way that they have iced out Matthew Knowles. I know, like, obviously, yes, he cheated on Beyonce's mum. Yeah. But I always feel like there's more to that. I feel like maybe that was the final straw yeah. where they were like, okay, you get out. But maybe there were some sort of creative differences. And he, yes, when Beyonce and, you know, was in Destiny's Child and she was younger, this was yeah. the direction where she was going in. And then as you get older you evolve and you change and you want you want to have you want to find out who you are you are woman. right your identity and i think sometimes there is this issue with fathers and their daughters yeah. not accepting their daughters for who they are yeah. today yeah. you still see her as the little five-year-old girl, girl yeah. that she would you know that was doing daddy 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 help yeah. me tie my shoes shoelaces daddy 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 help me yeah. you know do this or whatever like you're her father. You're always going to be important to her, but she is her own woman. And yeah. there is something about fathers relinquishing that, that hold that they have yeah. and just allowing their daughters to be, let yeah. them be who they are. Let them be great. Thrive, let them right? make mistakes. Absolutely. And have that relationship because like after something like this, even if she comes out of it, what you've got to think about what kind of relationship do I want out with my daughter yeah. after this as well? Yeah, yeah. Because it's going to be really, really difficult then to build some sort of relationship after you've put her through all of that. Mm-hmm. Like it's just absolutely um, just, yeah, it blows my mind. I feel so sorry, honestly, for her. It just seems like, like you're right. I don't know what's worse, that or being trapped in prison. Because it just feels like an imprisonment. You cannot yeah. do anything. We're talking about mental health, but then you're adding to it. Mm-hmm. So it's so I don't know whether it's calculated then yeah. to make her, he wants to push her as far as he can, like mm-hmm. in terms of like not or letting just, her or out just, or stuff like that. Or just enough. Because obviously so, if he pushes yeah. her all the way over the edge, mm-hmm. yes, he will still, because I'm sure that Britney's sitting on some beautiful royalties. Yeah. Uh, but... You know, for example, when she was doing the residency, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, let me push her enough, yeah. but not completely over the edge because then she wouldn't have been able to do the residency for as long as she did. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, definitely there is there is something insidious for me when parents continue to have this hold over yeah. their children. Let them be, let them be their own person. Let them make their mistakes. That's how you learn. You learn you learn best and you learn quickly when mm-hmm. you make your own mistake. Yes, there is secondhand embarrassment for sure. Mm-hmm. But if you mess up on your own, yeah. you will always remember that mess up yeah. that you made on your own. Absolutely, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And I think also there's something about, because people were saying, for example, because she had her two sons quite close to each other, that it could have been um, undiagnosed postpartum depression. Yeah. Which is extremely common. Yeah. You know? And like people blew it up out of proportion yeah. as opposed to offering help like yeah oh uh, and you're forgetting they're forgetting right she was a she was a teenage star yes. like as we talk about yes. it's really difficult as a teen like not even just teenage but kids kids stars growing up you see it with like amanda Bynes, Bynes yeah and Lindsay lohan you yeah. see it with so many of these um young kids stars um growing up in the limelight so quickly and um yeah and kind of not focusing on their mental health but like you said she it could, it could have possibly been postpartum dis- um um depression um paparazzi like the way they treat celebrities is just ridiculous yeah. like no freedom you know constantly taking no pictures boundaries. no boundaries and stuff like that like on a normal day it's going to make you want to scream mm. Like I've been, I've had road rage before where someone tried to cut me up and I've <laughs> literally threw my head out the window like I'm ready to fight someone, like over something so minor. Yeah. So you couldn't, you, you catch can only hands manage and you cut me up again. Yeah, because you might not have been in the right, if I have had a bad day, mm-hmm. you've caught me on a 
bad day. Sorry, right? But it is what it is. And I just think it's just awful that for something that for me is beyond her control, especially in relation to her mental health, is something that you're kind of holding against her Mm -hmm. all these years. Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel a little bit as well like, then it's not okay then to have mental health issues because stuff like this can happen. Yeah, yeah. Like, why would you want to open up? So if she was to have in further running line, she's never going to open up about it anymore. She's going to suffer in silence. She's going to suffer in silence. She's scared that you'll imprison her once again. So looking at that whole situation, it's really sad. And I think that there are a lot more people that are in that predicament that we probably don't know are in that predicament. Yeah. And even if it's... They're not in full conservatorship or anything like that. They definitely feel this hold yeah. over them from from their parents for whatever reason because they just they simply can't let them go. Yeah. So I I definitely feel for her. Yeah. I definitely feel for her. I really do, and I hope that her situation is able to change. That she's able to to live her life, to live her the life, way that she right? wants to live her life. She's had her accolades. Like this is Britney Spears. Is she Britney has Jean several. Spears. Yeah. She has. Several she was accol- miss like nah. Cut, Deep it. Let, let's Just. get nah. Like, like let's actually give her her accolade. Yeah. This woman like was pop. Yeah. She was miss. Pop. Yeah. Snakes. Dance moves. Yeah. Dance moves. Like she gave us hits after, after hits. hits. I'm a slave for you. What? Yeah. And then even when what? she came back and she did that, um, give me, give me more. Like, give just me. That, no. like literally. Like, 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 come on. No, you have she to respect. Did, she did act. Acting, I remember yeah. that film she was in, Crossroads, uh, when I was in, I think I was in primary school when that thing, came, when it, when that came on. Mm-hmm. Like, she's done so much. And she I feel kissed like her, Madonna on stage, like, come on. Yeah, her, traje- <laughs> her trajectory would have been so much better if the men in her life didn't try myself because I, know. I don't even know if I have time today for Justin Timberlake. I don't even know if I have time today yeah. for that one. These are not he too is another one. Yeah. I I'm not even gonna get This is the time. thing, this is the thing with men, right? Sometimes, right? Yeah. You're right. She's someone she's so talented that whatever happened happened, but when she came back, she would have been on top. Yeah, and she, she was on stayed, top. Yeah. Like like and there's only there's only legends, right, that do the Vegas residency. Only mm-hmm. legends. And mm-hmm. she's one of them. She's with the Mariah Careys. Yeah. Like she is a legend mm-hmm. in that retrospect. So it is like give like daddy, come on. Give yeah. her give her some give, give her, her some, some leeway. Yeah. Let her be free. Let yeah. her, you know, do her her own thing. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Gosh, there's just so, so, so much has happened, I guess, the past week or so. And I'm going to end it on this final yeah. thing, which is um, I saw a video of a woman talking about her. Basically, she was with a man who was quite affluent yeah. and he upgraded her life. He mm-hmm. put her in, you know, you know, those loft spaces. They're quite they're like a penthouse, isn't it? But okay. I feel like you have penthouse, then you have loft space. Okay. Loft space is like the contemporary version or whatever. Oh, okay. And he, you know, gave her a nice car or whatever. And then they parted ways for mm-hmm. whatever reason. She said it was amicable. Mm-hmm. There wasn't any harsh feelings towards each other. They Their relationship ended. And she insists that he needs to continue to pay for her lifestyle mm-hmm. because he's the one that introduced her to that lifestyle and mm-hmm. upgraded her. So he should continue to to pay for this lifestyle. She said it with a straight face. So she was dead serious. Said it with chest. She really said it with chest. So. Each to their own. Yeah. Each to their own. Mm -hmm. Like for me personally, it's, it's a bit stupid for me personally. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Because I don't see how someone can introduce you to a certain lifestyle, but then you want them, you've split up and then you want them to basically continue funding you like spousal support or something basically, like that. Basically, yeah. yeah that's and what they you were want. never you married, were they? Yeah, they were not married. That's what you want. That That's what... Why weren't you clever? Well, like, th- this is the thing, right? When... <sighs> be, I think people need to be clever when you're 
mixing in relationships with stuff with 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 wealthy people like you're dating someone who's wealthy your time may be limited get your business Mm -hmm. or whatever you need to do up Mm -hmm. so that when if anything was to go to pan or 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 down the drain you're like it's fine because mm-hmm. I've got something out of it and I've got something that I've built that I can move on with it and start making money. Like take, maybe you can take advantage of your situations. Mm-hmm. Like if you find yourself in that situation and you take advantage of that, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But for me, it's the audacity of saying, well, actually I live this lifestyle. So you should upkeep. So what would he pay, continue paying like for where she lives? That's stuff? what, that's what he's, that's what she was saying that he should continue to pay for where wow. she lives and I'm assuming her car as well because wow. he's the one that, you know, bought it for bought her. Bought it for her. She well, what's the car a gift? Was... The car was a gift? I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't know. Because if the car was a gift... Then I understand. Then I understand, right? Yeah. If you say, okay, you can keep the 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 the, the thing because mm-hmm. I'm I'm all about that. Yeah, but then but, but then I, I don't think he wanted the car back. Oh, okay. But it's now... The, the payments else. are now... Your responsibility because oh yeah the car payments yeah, yeah the car payments so it's not me is it me that should continue to pay we're yeah. not together anymore yeah so I just wanted to understand what is the role of a man when you two are no longer together there there, there is no role of no man That's, thank you yeah, so yeah I just, just you you've just you've just no you've you've for whatever reason you've broken up like that's hmm. it now. That's it. Like there is no role anymore. Like <laughs> it's finished. Yeah, it's absolutely finished. Like you, you weren't married. You don't have any kids by him. Mm-hmm. Like it is what it is. You give up that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Then when you give, when the man goes, the lifestyle goes with it too. It comes yeah. as a package. Yeah, that's how it's just like if you get find yourself in that situation, find a way to maybe make business or do something extra that. I don't know, can help bring in some revenue or something like mm-hmm. that. But I think it's so cheeky to ask a man to continue um, paying for this particular life, lifestyle. Yeah, when you guys are no longer in any sort of relationship anymore. that It, it, it baffles me. Pe- entitlement, that's what it is. Yeah. People are so entitled to other people's time, space, money and peace. Yeah. Those four things, people really think that they own other people's, you know, time, space, and peace. money, and sp- yeah. and peace. Yeah, and it's like no, that's that person's things, so they can do with them with them as they wish. If you do for me, great. If you don't yeah. do for me, I should have been doing for myself anyway. So that's one thing. But and I can't even say it's this generation that has that way of thinking because I because it didn't spring out of nowhere yeah it's obviously something that has it it seems escalated now because we've got social media but you know clearly there are people that were living like that anyway I just think that people need to go back to what you were saying making sure that they are able to provide for themselves but some Mm -hmm. people don't want to do that no some people don't want to work hard some people want what's from other people yeah. that's just how they are well then find another one that's, yeah that's find another one you know mm-hmm. go on richguys.com and find yeah. another one mm-hmm. and secure yourself your next rich go way. with the friend yeah like some people be staying with rich with rich people like mm-hmm. once you've had one of them you kind of get yourself into that circle maybe because mm-hmm. you've met other people mm-hmm. and stuff so it, it might be easier because you see that with like even like i don't know like Instagram models or mm-hmm. so, whatever and stuff, you know, once they've dated one rapper, you kind of get into that circle, you mm-hmm. became known. And then he, here you are, mm-hmm. like you just pass the parcel around the, the rap circle. <laughs> okay. Because you want that type of lifestyle. Yeah. We're going to end it there. <laughs> we're going to end it there. She said pass the parcel. Okay. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to think about what you would say to your younger self. Mm. Um, I'll come back to you. I'll circle back to you. So I'll okay. give you. I'll give you some time to think about it. I think for me, what I would say to um, my younger self is like value the importance of how you see you. Mm-hmm. So if you've already told yourself you've done a good job, mm-hmm. you shouldn't wait until somebody else says you've done a good job yeah. for you to now. Believe you've done a good job. Does that make sense? If somebody else does, oh, great, lovely, fine. 
But I already knew mm-hmm. I did what I needed to do. And respecting that and sitting in that and knowing, do you know what? I'm not mad. Yeah. I'm not going to gaslight myself because yeah. there are too many people trying to gaslight me. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to add to the number of people that are trying to do that anyway. Yeah. I'm going to respect what I've done and give myself the, the respect that I deserve. deserve. Give myself mm-hmm. the pat on the back that I deserve. Mm-hmm. If other people choose to pat me on the back, great. Mm-hmm. If other people choose not to pat me on the back, Great. So well. Fine. Yeah. Don't matter. I am responsible for me. I'm accountable for me. And I know when I've done my things and I'm not trying to seek outside validation, essentially. Yeah. So yeah, Good that's on. what I would say to myself, my younger self. Uh, my one's a bit of a, just a trivial one, mm-hmm. but I would say go on more girly holidays. Mm. I really, really... I'm going to say the R word. I don't really regret stuff, but I do, I'm going to say the R word. I do really regret not going on more girly holidays when I was younger. When you say girly holidays, what do you mean? Just like, just you or the girls, you go on like to a villa or whatever and stuff. Doesn't have to be somewhere cheap or whatever and just have a good time. That's all. Yeah, but you're making it sound like you didn't holiday. I holidayed, but I didn't, I didn't, do as many girly holidays okay. as I would have liked to, I think. I think now, like, you're kind of moving on in life. You're like, mm. your direction is going to change slightly. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to holiday because you, you have your own family or you have your kids and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But by God's grace, rich auntie vibes come yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, um, we'll be able to holiday with my girls and be able to leave the kids for the weekend or whatever and mm-hmm. still be able to enjoy enjoy ourselves that's one thing i would love to be able to do okay what what do you think about solo travel i can't do it why because i hate my own company d- d- okay we're gonna leave that there yeah okay let's we'll leave, leave that. that there all right okay yeah, le- guys <laughs> thank you so much for watching and for listening to this episode of advice with alex and friends the podcast make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already hit the notification bell if you are watching on youtube you can follow the podcast at advice with alex all of the links are in the description if you're watching on youtube and um am i missing anything else i feel no. like no no yeah, we've 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 literally given you Alex and Novella news today. Yeah, like literally. A and N A and N news. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what A&N we'll call news. a segment. Yeah, when we've A&N got, A&N news. When we've got news upon news, we'll call it A and yeah. A and N news. Ba, 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 ba. You know. <laughs> so um yes, we shall see you next time. That's it for this week, guys. Bye. Bye.